Hello, everyone. I would like to acknowledge that we are gathered together on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. To begin with, I would like to express my appreciation. I would like to thank Paul Zhang for his inspiration to me and other social workers. I'm grateful for the founder of this award for the generosity, the award committee for choosing me, nominators for their nominations, and UBC School of Social Work and BC Association of Social Workers for sponsoring and organizing the award. Today, I'm going to talk about the transition from school to work, from one work setting to another, guided by curiosity. My name is Karen, Karen Wong. I would like to give an introduction about myself. Nice to meet you all. I'm a registered social worker in BC. I've been practicing in diverse settings related to older adults, such as Community Senior Service Center, Long-Term Care, and Acute Care Hospital. I'm currently practicing social work in Providence Healthcare in BC. I'm serving in 411 Senior Center in Vancouver and BC Association of Social Workers, Seniors Community of Practice. My interests include elder care, family caregiver support, social work education, as well as social work and culture and interpretation. I did my BSW and MSW at UBC and have just started the PhD program at our school. I learned from our school director, Donna, that most audience today are social work students. They will become social work practitioners one day. I reviewed and reflected on my social work journey. One element which I found helpful for my transition from a social work student to a practitioner and from one setting to another setting is curiosity. Hopefully today's presentation will be helpful to social work students too. I would like to look into some literature together on transition from a student to a practitioner. This is indeed a topic which different disciplines are interested, such as nursing, medicine, and engineering, and of course, social work as well. According to literature, new graduates meet challenges at workplace for example, gap between school and reality, handle own emotions, feeling unprepared, but do not know how to handle. There are many ways to overcome these challenges, such as having orientation, having supervision, and doing reflection on job rewards. To me, one way is through curiosity. I turn the fear and stress into curiosity whenever I encounter challenges. There is lots of good literature I read during um, BSW and MSW. And there was a literature that I read during my BSW, which inspires me until today called Not Knowing and Assumption in Canadian Social Services for Refugees and Immigrants, a conversational inquiry into practitioner stance. This literature introduced me to the curiosity approach. The curiosity approach refers to the true curiosity of people around us as people, including understanding the perspectives and strengths. Practitioners do not make assumptions and should work from the stance that they do not know about the people they are working with. Coming from the position of curiosity, we try to ask clients what they think they need instead of imposing what we think they need. This prevents us from making assumption and thus helps to prevent misunderstanding. So I apply curiosity approach to my transitions. 
because I'm curious. I search for answers. I asked questions. I did observation. I did reflections. I will illustrate how I apply these with my practice examples. When I first graduated, my social work journey began in community senior service center. Seniors did not know how to apply for what they were entitled for, such as benefits and services. We called the government departments together and they asked us to go online, but seniors uh, could not access online. Instead of being disappointed to the government departments and shocked by the reality as a new social work graduate, I was curious about this access problem. Indeed, apart from me, other staff, volunteers, and senior members also wonder about this problem. I should say that some seniors are very good at technology. Some use a technology every day. However, for some of those who are coming asking for help, they do not necessarily know how to access online or can access online. So I and other people who are curious about this problem ask why and observed. And we noticed that there may be several reasons to explain this. One possible reason is poverty. The seniors may lack money to purchase access to internet and equipment. Another possible reason is ageism. Technology class and equipment do not consider senior uses enough. Community senior service center try to support seniors to access to technology. For example, they have um, volunteer programs uh, which match uh, seniors with a volunteer. Uh, often these volunteers uh, are also seniors uh, to learn how to use technology. However, because community senior services generally are very underfunded, they do not have enough uh, financial and human resources to sustain the program. We reflected, what does this mean? Senior access to technology indeed is a human rights issue. We later conducted a study and published a report, an article with SFU, Science and Technology for Aging Research Institute and 411 Senior Center with support from community member on advocating for seniors' access to technology and related information and services as a human right. And this supplement the national advocacy campaign on $10 internet plan for seniors. Another example uh, is in long-term care. So after working in community senior service center, I transitioned to long-term care. When I first started in long-term care, I heard sentences like, oh, this is my role, this is not my role, this is your role. So instead of being stressed out of not knowing what my roles are as a social worker and feeling underprepared, I was curious, what are social workers' role in long-term care? I was the only social worker in long-term care, so I searched for the answers. I consulted my interdisciplinary colleagues. I looked up the job posting of social workers in other facilities. I attended conferences and raised questions. What are the roles of social workers? I eventually conducted a study and interviewed social workers in long-term care. I found that social workers in long-term care do not define our roles, but our scope of practice that depends on our fundamental values that are self-determination, relationship building, and advocating for social justice. During the study, I learned that in BC, some long-term care facilities have no social workers. So I was curious again, who championed the values we just mentioned in these facilities. I shared this with members of BC Association of Social Workers, Seniors, Community of Practice, 
and we have been doing advocacy work for having at least one social worker per facility. If you are interested about our advocacy work, you can go to the BC Association of Social Workers website and learn more. And now I would like to um, give an example working in the hospital, how I apply for um, curiosity in my practice. So I moved to um, hospital from long-term care. In hospital, I work in surgery and medicine as well as geriatric acute care. In hospital, we use healthcare language. I didn't understand what many abbreviation means. I was curious, what does this abbreviation mean? I guess from the context and search for answer, I still did not understand. I was also curious about myself. Why don't I ask other people? I reflected. So I came up with two points. The first point is that hospital is a plate uh, of elites of different disciplines. You look stupid to ask question. You don't want to, especially when you just join the team. Another point is that hospital is a fast paced work setting. You fear to bother other team members, but I care less about my faces, but more for my clients. So I ask in the interdisciplinary brand, what does this mean? Some team members said that I don't understand too. So when I asked, I unintentionally helped the speakers understand not everyone understand what they were saying and eventually enhanced team communication and collaboration. There's a saying, good health care starts from a question and a good question starts from curiosity. And in hospital, uh, patients came from diverse cultural and language backgrounds. For some of the geriatric patients, um, they used to speak good English or French. However, they lost their ability in these languages because of cognition decline. We use interpretation services. But I was curious, to what extent do they understand? I asked my patient, tell me how much you understand your conditions. Patient did not understand or understood in a way different from me. I found a path from language. There are also some gaps in cultures. I reflected, how can we improve the communication? How can we um, help, especially we can't have the help of interpretation 24 seven. When we could not rely on interpretation 24 seven, we have to rely on some of our team member who can speak uh, different languages, but are there any real conflicts? Why do some colleagues do not use interpretation service? What are the reasons behind? Have my colleagues considered the cultural factors when using interpretation services? How can we better use interpreters and better collaborate with them? Currently, I'm collaborating with the Department of Social Work and also some community senior service trying to explore um, all these questions. So for the last slide, I want to talk about implication of curiosity to my transitions. It helped me to understand my client deeper. It helped me to be more critical. It helped me to turn stress and fear of transitions to interest to explore the unknowns. And how do we nurture curiosity? I think one very important thing to do is to connect and network with other people especially those coming from a very different backgrounds from you. People always give us stimulation for professional network. 
to me, BC Association of Social Workers is a very good place for me to connect. And also lifelong learning, read a book, take a course, do volunteering, or just connect with people. All this help us to nurture our curiosity. I hope today's presentation uh, would be helpful, especially to uh, our incoming social work students. Thank you.